across Canada, backyard inventors are dreaming big and risking it all for their ideas. I think we put in between seventy-five dollars and $100,000 for KKENS. I'd like to see this frame made on the shelves of every hardware retailer across North America. Innovation expert Doug Hall will choose one of these inventors to take to his inventions boot camp, Eureka Ranch. When you invest, you know, so much of your time away from your family, you definitely want to see it come to life in the end. I'd like for him to choose the product and invite me to the ranch. I'm trying to do the math mm -hmm. to see, can we make a business out of this? The chosen inventor will work with Doug to retool their idea before pitching it to a big business. It's a once-in-a-lifetime shot at turning their invention into a multi-million dollar business opportunity. <music> Doug Hall has invented his way to the top of the world. At least 18 products in your home were shaped by this man. Fortune 500 companies pay big bucks to develop their ideas with his innovation team. But today, he is searching for an everyday inventor to take their invention to market. Going to the backyards is like going on a treasure hunt. We're looking for those diamonds in the rough that we can polish and turn into something sparkling that can be made real. Marketing manager Laura Lang has a sweet invention she believes can keep baked goods looking their best. Cake Ends is essentially a bookend that goes into a cake face of a display cake for cafes. This product is designed for commercial use. A lot of the dessert product comes from purveyors. Okay. It's pre-sliced and frozen. As they start to defrost, they soften and they come apart. Which results in cake slices that are unsellable. So there's a lot of waste in product, which is obviously waste of profit. It's clear that within the restaurant business, there's a real problem. And it's a good, useful product. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Inventor Kara Morgan has a one-size-fits-all solution for dealing with fast-growing babies. My two-year-old son prompted me to invent the sleeper because he grew very quickly the first six months. How long have you been working on this? A little over a year and a half. It's called a Fitzy Sleeper, and what it is, it's a sleeper for infants and toddlers that grows with the child. Concealed elastic in the seams allows the sleeper to stretch as the baby grows. They grow on average about a half an inch to an inch every month. So when this child grows, it would just grow right along with them. Now a sleeper mm -hmm. can last longer yeah. than it would before. Easily twice as long. I love Kara. She's trying, she's reaching, she's doing stuff. This is going to significantly increase the cost of okay. doing it. But you get the benefit of yeah. not needing as many. Okay. And and it and it's pretty neat. Yeah. I'll, I like I'll be it. perfectly honest with you. I think I think it's very neat. Gordon Payton is an engineer with a solution for turning wall framing into a simple one-man job. The name of the invention is Frame Mate, and it's a one-piece framing jig. That saves time because you don't have to do the layout and the marking normally associated with doing that task. Hello. Hi there. Can you show me how it works? Sure, absolutely. If I'm laying out my wall on the floor, I've got the sill plate. Slide this over the sill plate, attach it to the first stud, drive in my nails or screws. I then take a second stud, slide it into this stud. It's held perfectly square. My hands are free. I can then drive in a nail, screw, whatever the case may be. Typically, a person would need an extra set of hands to hold the wood pieces square and in place while screwing them together. I don't have to mark every 16 inches, and it also keeps everything square. Put okay, the next so it's, it's in, a guide. keep going. It's a guide for doing it? There's a lot of stake. I've got a lot of personal time in it and you know a lot of family money tied up into it. Inventor Laura Lang has a lot riding on her unique idea for keeping display cakes from literally falling apart. When it comes to an invention, one of the things we look at is what problem are we solving? Right. There are problems that happen very frequently, but they're not a big problem. So I saw the cake. I saw what it did. I got it. But I, I don't see lots of opportunities for transforming it. You know, it, it kind of is what it is. So I'm going to not bring you to the ranch <laughs> because the product is the product. I, I don't see how I can really inspire folks with this. All right. I know that there's a product there that's, that's got a, a profit opportunity. I just need to see it come to life. 
Kara Morgan is hoping Doug sees the growth potential in her expandable sleeper for babies. I'm trying to do the math mm -hmm. to see, can we make a business out of this? I mean, these things sell for cheap. Mm -hmm. When you increase the price on these things, and you have to explain that, this market's been driven to nothingness. The mindset of the companies has become its commodity, and it's as cheap as you can go. And I don't see a way to change it. I, mean, I think it is what it is. I'm going to have to say no. No way. I'm sorry. Okay. Not really. There might be another way to do this, and I'll keep exploring that. Backyard inventor Gordon Payton has had no real success to date in marketing his framing invention to the pros. I'm in discussions with hardware retailers on it, preliminary. I've taken them to um, trade shows. My first reaction was that the professional carpenters are going to look at this and say, it's for people with more money than sense. While his invention is aimed at professionals, Gordon believes his product could also appeal to the DIY enthusiast. The product that would be suitable for somebody either building their own, framing their own basement walls, or maybe building a shed or a playhouse for the kids. But Doug is concerned that the average DIYer wouldn't have much use for this construction tool. As it is now, I don't know that it is a business that would be viable. The challenge would be there would need to be a transformation of this into something bigger. And I don't know what the bigger is. I'd love you to come to the Eureka Ranch to do that. Thank you, I'd like to come. So it's gonna be a grand adventure. I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be good fun. When we come back, to me, the challenge with this is, is that the real pros, it doesn't work for them. It's decision time for Gordon. What do you want to do? Innovation expert Doug Hall has chosen everyday inventor Gordon Payton to take to his Eureka Ranch. Move it over to the next bay. To try to turn his wall framing device into a marketable product. My first reaction was that the professional carpenters are going to look at this and say, it's for people with more money than sense. The challenge would be there would need to be a transformation of this. I think I'm in for a pretty tough go. People that are going to be tearing apart my baby, and I'm going to have to deal with it and, and suck it up. As we talk in the backyard, who is this for? Right. To me, the challenge with this is, is that the real pros, it doesn't work for them. The professional construction people saying, why would I need that? Mm -hmm. I don't need that. That place in between, the real pros and the amateurs, is really sort of the valley of death. And so, in my mind, we have to go one way or the other. We need to make a choice. What do you want to do? I mean, when I conceived of the product in the first place, it was always targeted towards the masses so that they can build with it. OK, so we're going for the masses. To ask construction people to carry another tool would have been a lot more difficult. I think it's, it's a more exciting challenge to take this product and make it suitable for the mass market. Now the team must come up with a way to convince home DIYers of the benefits of the FrameMate. Challenge with FrameMate is it doesn't solve the problem. It's still too scary for a new person to get into construction. Doug wants to focus on transforming the FrameMate into an easy build kit that would motivate amateurs to tackle a project normally outside their comfort zone. What we've got to do is we've got to turn this into something. We're going to create something that people can say, I'd like to do that, and they do it. When Doug first met Gordon, he had a number of home projects in mind for his invention. So this, to me, is a product that would be suitable for somebody either building their own, framing their own basement walls, or maybe building a shed or a playhouse for the kids. Let's just take that we're building a shed. Is that mm -hmm. a classic weekend project? That is absolutely a classic weekend. I would like to do the fundamentals to understand what's it take to build a shed now. I want to have a list of every tool you need, every piece of material that you would need. Let's also do the steps, every step you have to do. Right. I thought it was just going to be a tweak here, a tweak there. We'd be all done and wrapped in no time. But now, now we've got a huge task ahead of us. To tackle the intense workload over the next 48 hours, Gordon has teamed up with innovation coach Maggie Nichols. Well, let's talk about how big a shed we're going to build. So we need pressure treated wood. For most people that are taking on home projects, it takes a tremendous amount of time. And the whole thing is drawn out into a, a, a huge ordeal, and, and a lot of times they end up unfinished. And then we permanently put them in place? No. Nope. Now we mark and lay out for where we want the windows and where we want the doors to be. 
And so we're looking at all the things it takes to normally build this little shed. And it's draining, to be honest, to figure out here's all the steps that go behind it. What'd you come up with? We lost interest at step 36 between measuring, cutting, and sticking. There is a lot to do with building a basic shed. No wonder people are scared of doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still too scary for a new person to get into construction. Given that we're going towards amateurs, so we've got to create a new type of project. Think of it as training wheels for construction. Doug pushes Gordon to come up with a foolproof design for their shed. Let's set a goal. The one thing is, is that it's one day done at 5 o'clock. Let's put fewest pieces of material, tools, steps, fewest skills. The new product will also have to appeal to a wide variety of consumers. OK, so say we have this universal kit. It is a shed. Mm -hmm. What else could it be? It could be a playhouse. It could be a cabana for your pool, like a tiki hut or a tiki bar. A tiki bar, cool. Okay. Could what be else a could garden it... house. Greenhouse, yeah. The frame aid is a key part of, the, of this because you still need to make sure your studs are 16 inches on center. You still need to make sure everything's square. The design team quickly puts together plans for Gordon's one-day do-it-yourself shed. So we've got one window, one door. We're not talking about any siding. Right, OK. We're talking about putting a fabric mm -hmm. with painting on it. So the same frame can be used for any one of the ones you want. How about if the two of you build one? Gordon and Maggie must test if their new design is simple enough for the average DIYer to master single-handedly. So these are going to be our top and bottom plates. OK. Yeah, you're best to lock one in first. There you go. So I literally don't have to hold anything for you. Frame made is solo. It holds it, keeps everything in place. OK. Let's get the nail gun and start driving these in. What are you guys thinking with regards to when consumers are making this? Are we going to do nails or are we going to do because they're not going to have a nail gun. No. The only power tool they would need yes. would be a drill. A drill. Tomorrow, Gordon will get to test the simplicity of his 5 o'clock shed with a panel of consumers. I must admit, I am very nervous to be putting these in the hands of an uneducated consumer and letting them go and see what they come up with. If the public testing doesn't go very well tomorrow, that's going to be a big hit. I'm not sure what we can actually do to frame it if it can't be accepted in its current form. Introducing. Coming up. The 5 o'clock shed. Consumers get hands-on with Gordon's invention. With fabric sides, I want to keep my lawnmower, my chainsaw, my leaf blower. There's a security factor there. I don't know that it is a business that would be viable. After unsuccessfully trying to bring his frame mate to market, Gordon Payton is now working with Doug Hall to repackage it into something bigger. Say we have this universal kit that can be a shed, a greenhouse, playhouse, tiki bar. A shed construction kit for beginners. Today, Gordon will present his 5 o'clock shed kit to a panel of consumers. If it doesn't score high here, he'll be back to square one with his invention. Thank you, everybody, for coming to help us. This is my baby. There's, there's money, there's time, there's pride. This is going to be the deciding factor as to whether this product is going to be a success or not. Introducing the 5 o'clock shed. We had some uh, goals that we set out at the beginning of this project done in a day. Not the day that ends at midnight, the day that ends at 5 o'clock. We also had to have the least amount of material, fewest amount of steps, and the fewest amount of tools used to actually complete and build this product. So it normally takes this amount of tools, and now it's just. So these two versus no, that. If the public are to buy into Gordon's shed product, they must be confident that they can successfully tackle a project like this using the frame made tool. What we've got here are some samples, and if we have some willing volunteers from the audience, come on forward, sir. So I'll give you that. And sir, if you want to take that one. First, they try building a frame the traditional way. And so they were measuring it, and they measured it again and again. And just as the guy was getting ready to use the screw gun, the board moved a little bit. Next up, these amateur DIYers get to try the frame mate to see for themselves how it turns a two-person task into a solo job. It shows the real difference the frame mate will do for you. It not only makes them 16 inches on center exactly spaced, but it also keeps them square. I'm just wondering, how close do you think they are? 
<laughs> now it is. <laughs> I mean, it was beautiful. I think it's a great idea. Uh, it saves a lot of aggravation as far as uh, setting up like your studs and that. I think I could do it. I really do. Now it's time for the public to get a closer look at the shed itself. They come in four different designs. A garden shed, a greenhouse, a playhouse, or a tiki bar. And so this fabric that goes on. Come up and just have a walk through. What's the dimensions on it? It's eight by six, and it's eight foot tall. With fabric sides, yeah. a shed, I want to keep my lawnmower, my chainsaw, my leaf blower. There's a security factor there. Because I have a rusty old garden shed, and I like the plans of it. I like the idea of customizing it. It's easy to build. You don't need the no measuring tape, nothing. It's uh, ready to go. The public have had their say. And back at the ranch, the data is being crunched. We've got the research results. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking at around five million in sales. <sighs> and when one person sees it, there's gonna be some word of mouth that's gonna kick it, even in the first season. Right. When I got those numbers, it was a shock. All in the back of my mind, I'm saying, what have I done? I've let the genie out of the bottle. The challenge facing Gordon is now unlocking that potential. How to market his five o'clock shed to the masses. And I believe that this is the kind of product that could be a pretty powerful infomercial. And tomorrow, Gordon will get to pitch to a company that specializes in direct from TV sales. What we've got left is to get the pitch together. <sighs> Don't try to sell it. Mm -hmm. Just educate them on the challenges and the problems. This is a very tough challenge. And I've told Gordo that he's going to have to be top of his game. I'm very excited and nervous and scared. Uh, I got a whole bunch of emotions going on right now under the, under the surface about the pitch tomorrow. When we come back... How do you address, you know, where it's placed? The bottom drops out of Gordon's pitch. Do you need a foundation of some sort? At Eureka Ranch, engineer Gordon Payton has developed a foolproof shed building kit around his frame mate invention. Introducing the five o'clock shed. The last two days have been quite a roller coaster. I had no idea that we we're going to go down this path and develop a completely new product with such exciting potential as the five o'clock shed. By targeting amateur DIYers, Gordon has finally found a way to market his unique framing tool. This is probably the most nervous I've ever been because there's so much riding on this. Today, he will be pitching to a direct marketing executive who could create a TV campaign to reach consumers across North America. I may look calm and composed on the outside, but I'm, I'm very surprised that I haven't thrown up yet. Al Diem is marketing and international sales manager with Hampton Direct, a company that specializes in direct from TV sales commercials. Market research has shown that nine out of 10 people want to be able to build a shed and enjoy it in eight hours. That same research has shown that only one person feels confident enough in their abilities to actually build and enjoy a shed in eight hours. That leaves about an 80% market opportunity. And to that end, what we came up with is the five o'clock shed. So you start in the morning, and by five o'clock, you can be sitting and having a nice cold drink. Gotcha. Typical framing project, you're looking at at least 14 tools, some of which are pretty intimidating. So the new five o'clock shed, first wood frame shed that can be completed in eight hours by only using two tools. This comes with the kit. Most people have this. Yep. The biggest challenge in wood frame construction is to make sure that those studs are square and in the right place the first time and every time. So the revolutionary new patent pending frame mate is gonna help consumers build studs right and square I got some material here to give a live demonstration. We take the frame mate, set it over the stud, bring in our next stud, bring in our fasteners, and drive them in. I'd like to come down and uh, get a feel as to how easy it is to set the next stud in place. Next stud. We're done. Pretty easy. Right. Once we've got the frame built, in order to finish it quickly, the concept is to use some fabric panels attached so the, the builder would get, again, also in the kit. So one concept is to have a, a greenhouse, so you're using clear panels. 
We also have kids' playhouse. The next one is the traditional garden shed, so we've got faux siding on it as well as a, a faux shingle roof for the top. And my personal favorite, the beach hut. The tiki bar. For your favorite libation. Mm. Yeah. How do you address the, um, you know, where it's placed? Do you need a foundation of some sort? Part of the doing it in eight hours, one of the first things that we realized that had to go was the floor. So if it's a kid's playhouse or a beach hut, you know, it's probably gonna be on some level ground already, maybe on a patio or a, or a pool deck. We wanted to avoid any kind of permanent connection to the ground because then you can start to get into building code right. issues with local building codes and local municipalities. Also, I think you're limiting to people who actually own houses. I don't know that That's you're true. gonna get somebody to make this investment, put it in their backyard if, if they're renting. Right. I definitely have some concerns about the marketability as far as you're limiting the demographic. I think it's gonna skew mostly, mostly men, yeah. they do. Certainly, it's a great item. I've never seen anything like it. Gordo, it's a yes. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice item, it really is. I did it. I got them to yes. What will happen is we'll take this product back, and assuming that there are no barriers there at all, we make an initial offer. He's very close to commercial ready. I mean, it's an incredible distance that he's come. From just the frame mate to the 5 o'clock shed, I mean, it's awesome. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> very nice to meet you. Yeah, good item. I've brought a lot of people on the journey with me, so I'm very appreciative to them and, and to, uh, to everybody here who's helped me get to here. Visit us online, wnetwork.com slash backyardinventors.